Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007, Approximate Wave Functions at the University of Western Australia. Um, in this lecture I'm going to talk about the molecular Hamiltonian. We saw that the time-dependent Schrodinger equation involves a Hamiltonian and we know the rules of making that Hamiltonian from the first set of lectures. Essentially we have to replace the momentum by minus I H grad. Okay, that's fine, but what does this Hamiltonian look like for a molecule, or indeed a protein, or a human, or the whole universe? We can write that down. We can write down the Hamiltonian for any one of those things. It looks the same for all of those things. So this is the beauty of the Schrodinger equation. You can apply it, the same equation to all of those things. Of course, it gets more complicated when the systems get bigger, but in principle, the, the Hamiltonian looks the same. So what does it look like? Okay, so the Hamiltonian, as we said, is the sum of a kinetic energy. H, the Hamiltonian, is the sum of a kinetic energy of all the particles and the potential energy of interaction between these particles. They may be attracting or repelling each other. That, by various forces, all of that's included in here. So that would include electrical forces, gravitational forces, magnetic forces, but actually in chemistry in the first instance we it's sufficient to deal just with electrical forces. Right, so Hamiltonian is kinetic plus potential energy. Fine, but potential energy of what? Well, we use the idea of Descartes when we decompose our system into particles and the particles are electrons, protons and neutrons and all, each of these has a kinetic energy so and Descartes said we give everything a position uh, and we see how they move around so the particles in our system we've drawn two nuclei A and B they have a mass, uh, which takes into account the mass of the neutrons, and they have a charge based on the charge of how many protons are in there. And in the yellow, we have a couple of electrons labelled by little indices I and J. We use capital indices A and B by convention for the nuclei. And here's the origin of the system with respect and using this origin and these three spatial axes, we can get the positions of all these particles like this position would be little ri, this would be little rj. The vector uh, between uh, these two electrons would be rij, which is the vector ri minus rj. So that would be important for calculating the repulsion between these two electrons. Here's a vector between little ri and capital RA, capital R. Uh, subscript capital A, which is the position of this nucleus, and the distance between this nucleus and the electron is important to characterize that attraction between these two things. And also we have uh, little ra and little rb, uh, the positions of the two nuclei, which is important to characterize the repulsion between these two nuclei. And that's all the forces that are involved. Okay. So let's go into more detail here. Here's the same picture. Here's the same Hamiltonian. Kinetic energy first. The total kinetic energy of the system is built up of the total kinetic energy of the, all the nuclei and all the electrons. So let's jump down here. The kinetic energy of the nuclei is P squared divided by 2 times the mass of that nuclei. P squared becomes minus IH bar grad squared minus i h bar squared gives you minus h bar squared so and in atomic units the h disappears so we have a minus sign here 1 on 2 m uh, times grad squared so this includes the mass of the protons and the neutr uh, neutrons it's the mass of the whole mass of the nucleus likewise the kinetic energy of the electrons is 1 on 2 times the mass of the electron in atomic units that's 1 times grad squared of i the little i is saying that's the coordinates 
of the electron I, and here we have grad squared capital A, that's the derivative with respect to the nuclear position. So very, very similar. No dramas there. The second part of the Hamiltonian is the total potential energy, and it's composed of three parts. A nuclear electron attraction energy, an electron electron repulsion energy, and a nuclear nuclear repulsion energy, which are all given down here. So the electron nuclear attraction energy, this is a sum over all the electrons, 1 to n, all the nuclei, of which there are capital M, and the attraction energy is the charge on the nucleus, ZA, times the charge on the electron, which is minus 1. That gives rise to this minus 1 over here. And the charge of the electron and nucleus is given by integers in atomic units. And of course, it's divided by the distance between that electron, the ith electron, and its uh, corresponding nucleus. So that would be this vector here between I and A. And the distance between that, so we would have to use the three coordinates of this vector to square root that to get the distance over here. So this is, this is the, the, the bars here on either side of the vector means take the length of that. Sometimes that's written as RIA. That is a negative term. That's the attractive term. That is actually the only term in the whole Hamiltonian which is really negative. Um, these kinetic energy terms look like they could be negative because of the negative sign, but actually the curvature of the wave function, this is the second derivative, the wave function is actually uh, curved upside down. So most of the time the kinetic the curvature is negative. So negative times a negative gives you a positive kinetic energy. So that's what we expect kinetic energy to be positive. Don't be fooled by this minus sign. This minus sign is real because the top and bottom here are both positive. Okay, so that's the electron nuclear attraction term. There's also the other two terms, electron electron repulsion. So that's the charge of the electron one or electron I times the charge on electron J, that's minus 1 times minus 1, gives us plus 1, divided by Ri minus Rj. That should be Rj, and that's one particular distance between a pair of electrons. And we sum up all those uh, repulsion terms, uh, and we calculate the electron repulsion energy. But there's one little trick. Um, there's a factor half introduced here. The reason for the half is so that we don't double count repulsions because otherwise if we didn't have the half and we summed over all of I and J, we would count the repulsion between I and J and then again J and I. So we would double count the repulsions if we summed over all I and J. So that's why we have a half over here. And by the way, we can't have I equal to J because that would have a repulsion of an electron with itself, which is infinite. So the self-repulsion is obviously ignored because it's, it's a bit of a problem actually, the self-repulsion. Um, but we get rid of it here for, uh, for obvious reasons and that should be a J. Likewise, the nuclear-nuclear electron-electron, uh, the nuclear-nuclear repulsion energy, that should be the nuclear-nuclear repulsion energy. Uh, this is obviously a copy-paste problem involves the charge of the nucleus A, charge of the nucleus B, divided by the distance between them. So this is just Coulomb, Coulomb's law, and there's a half factor in there for the same reason of the electron-electron repulsion. Okay, so that's the Hamiltonian. You should be able to write this Hamiltonian down, and um, you should, obviously, because it's the Hamiltonian that we need to solve for the wave function, so be able to do that in your sleep if you become a quantum mechanician. The only other thing I want to say about this equation is to distinguish between one electron and two electron terms. Okay, so what's an ele one electron term? Well, a one electron term involves only the coordinates of one electron at a time. For example, this kinetic energy involves the coordinates of electron I by itself and not I and J. 
It's just one electron at a time. And this is also a one electron term because it involves only one electron at a time, Ri, the distance to all of the nuclei. So this is a one electron term and we can also say it's a one nucleus term if we want to. This is in contrast. These two terms are in contrast to this one, which is a two electron term, obviously because it has Ri here and Rj. It involves a pair of electrons. And when we come to work out matrix elements, uh, these are working out the matrix elements, um, basically inner products between wave functions, the one and two electron terms behave in slightly different ways. That's all I have to say for you on the molecular Hamiltonian. See you later.